But let's just see if this is, you know, let's see if these 260 horsepower is made of. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the all-new Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid. Before we get into this video, though, a huge shout-out and link to the Larch Miller Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in Provo, Utah, for giving me some time with this Pacifica. This one is available for sale for the time being, so if you're interested, I'll include a link to their inventory in the description down below. If you have any questions or need any help, just ask for Ryan. And then on a side note, if you save time and money the next time purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So under the hood, we have a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter V6 that's paired to a hybrid system and an EVT for the transmission. Now, fuel economy without the hybrid system is 30 miles per gallon. Once you take into account the hybrid system, it jumps up to 82 MPGE, and then you have 32 miles of driving electric range since this is a plug-in hybrid. Power outputs, 260 horsepower, 236 pound-feet of torque. Now, before we go over the front end, I do want to mention, if you see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, it's pretty simplistic with the design. You guys can see it's kind of raised there on either side just a little bit, and then it kind of dips down in the center. Pretty cool looking. And then popping down below, everything's blacked out because this has the S appearance package, so it definitely looks pretty sporty. You've got the LED daytime running lights there with the headlights. Notice the Chrysler logo blacked out, and you have a camera there at the bottom of the logo, and then fog lights there on either side. And then putting it all together, it looks good for a minivan. Coming around the side here, our tire and wheel setup is 235, 60, 18 in the front and over in the rear. And you guys can see again, darker coloration on the wheels as part of that S appearance package. Now being a plug-in hybrid, it of course has to have a plug. And so here it is pretty straightforward. And then here is your full side view on the van. And then you guys can see that is your little gas cap uh, area. So they're actually both on the same side, which is pretty cool for the plug and then for the gas cap situation. So here's a key fob. We have our unlock function or lock function, or remote start, the opening for the hatch, and then the opening for the doors. So we'll just press this a couple times, and bada bing, bada boom, it'll pop right open. When it comes to storage space, it is actually really solid here in the back of the Pacifica, and just like the Chrysler Town & Country that came before it, you have the whole stow-and-go seat situation here, as you can see with the labeled straps. You can basically throw them down into this area right here. You also got a 12-volt right there, and then when you're all done, just press that button and it'll lower the hatch right back down. Now we have the cool Pacifica light bar here. Notice the Chrysler logo there in the center and then Pacifica S at the bottom. And then we have our E-Hybrid badge there on the other side. And putting it all together, I do think that Chrysler did a good job with the styling on the Pacifica because yes, it is a minivan, but I think it's a good looking minivan. You can use the key fob to open the door, but you can also just yank on it. We got these nice leather seats here with this package. You guys can see perforated there in the center portion. Look at those armrests, pretty cool. Now actually inside legroom is pretty solid and you guys can see got a little storage pocket there. We got some USBs here on the back of the seat and nothing in the center surprisingly. Headroom is also pretty good. And then in the third row, legroom is actually pretty solid and then I do have some storage space here on the side. And then you can see headroom is also good. So here's the door panel in the front. You guys can see really nice padding with the stitching. We've got all of our window controls here. Front windows are automatic. You got your mirror adjustments as well. And then the mirrors do have blind spot monitoring. And then here are the front seats. Notice S logo there, perforated in the center, just like the rear seats. And then we do have our power adjustments on the side. And then we got our light controls here. And then you guys can see the steering wheel. It is manually adjustable. And then you got some nice like padding and stitching in the dash. So here's a steering wheel, really nice padding all around. You can see the contrasted stitching in the center. We do have adaptive cruise control with this as well as regular cruise control. Controls for the center stack, and then we have our voice command and phone controls. Turn signal stock, windshield wiper stock. And then here is the center gauge cluster. You guys can see we've got some hybrid information here on the side, and then obviously fuel information on the other side. And then it also lets you know like, hey, you've got 11 miles of electric driving range, and then you know 57 miles total, and then 46 gas. So it's pretty cool that it kind of breaks it all down for you. And then you can see other general uh, information there on the center as well. Now we have a regular backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel, nothing too fancy. And then as for the infotainment system, notice we have our climate control here in the infotainment system. Um, so you get your dual zone for the front and then we have heated seats and a heated steering wheel, which is definitely welcome. Um, overall response time here is pretty uh, solid. And you guys probably saw you can control the rear climate here from the front, which also helps out. And then notice we have our e-hybrid uh, tab right here, which shows everything that's currently happening. And if you're wondering about those rear climate controls, they're just right here, so right there. 
And then we have a radio control section right here with our lane departure stability control and then our analog climb controls just down below. And then of course we got our famous Chrysler dial shifter here with our parking brake. Got a bunch of uh, charging ports down below and then some storage space. And it looks like got a little coin holder storage bin right there. And then even more storage space down below. You guys can see the cup holders right here. And yeah, storage on top of storage, let me tell you. You see the stitching continues all across the dash. And then with the glove box, got to reach pretty far to get to that. Decent storage in there too. So up top here, we've got some controls to like open up the hatch, the doors, and then if you wanna turn off the automatic doors, you can. So sorry about the glare, but here's our window sticker. You guys can see the base MSRP, $49,000. And it says 360 camera system as standard, but that looked like a regular. Oh yeah, there you go, safety sphere unavailable. So just the regular backup camera. So it comes standard with the 360 camera, but it has it deleted with this. Interesting. Anyways, total MSRP on this one, 51,000. $498, five year, 60,000 mile on the powertrain, eight year, 100,000 mile on the hybrid stuff, three year, 36,000 mile on the basic. Lots of different warranty stuff. Anyways, let's drive it. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood. Both the mirrors, just again, do a blind spot monitoring and then throughout the rest of the rear. And let's set off. Okay, so setting off, we are initially in just full electric mode, you guys can see here with the uh, power flow. And this is not related to the review whatsoever, but as I was filming this review, like at the very end, I heard this like clunk sound in the background. And I'm like, oh, that might, that might not be that much. And then I looked behind me and there was a car that literally had its hood fly up and smash into its windshield. <laughs> so someone's having a bad day today. Um, but aside from me seeing uh, weird things, pretty cool. Like it's, it's super smooth with this. Um, and frankly, it doesn't drive to, um, what's the word for it? Like, like it, it feels fully electric, but like the brakes don't feel too weird. Like it, it's actually pretty reasonable with the driving. Um, it's not doing any one pedal drive stuff though. So that's something to mention. I guess we'll see how this drives in the snow. It's, it's just lightly like snowing right now. That heated steering wheel is definitely coming in clutch though. Cause my fingers got pretty dang cold. <laughs> Um, from filming. Yeah, I feel bad for that truck driver. He's been trying to load up vehicles for like the last couple hours that I've been filming here today. But yeah, seat comfort's also pretty good here with this. I'm gonna kind of get on it a little bit here. Partial throttle, full electric. Oh, uh, now the engine turned on pretty quick. And yeah, the engine was just like, boom, hey, I'm here. So, and now you guys can see that the engine's driving too so it is kind of doing some stuff i wonder if when we come to a stop here if that so it does have regen though because it is showing me that it's getting some um back but let's just see if this is you know let's see what these 260 horsepower is made of not bad honestly not bad honestly um, I think that they kind of tuned this to be good, like zero to 40, zero to 60, like, like not crazy sports car quick, but quick enough. Um, but honestly, not that bad. Like that's, that's pretty solid, especially when you compare it to like the Sienna, this definitely feels quicker than the Sienna. So that's, that's a big plus. Now we're back in full electric and yeah, you guys can see that moving, moving us forward a little bit. That's pretty cool to see that in real time. So. I really like this, honestly. Um, I'm a big fan. I would prefer to have this over the uh, hybrid that's in the um, Toyota Sienna because this is a plug-in hybrid. So like you can do that full electric driving, whereas with the Sienna, it's just a traditional hybrid. So it gets good fuel economy, but this has a lot more utility to it. Let me know which one you guys would pick. I know people are gonna be like, Toyota, reliability, <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, are you really gonna keep your minivan for like 300,000 miles or are you gonna sell it after like 30,000 miles? Cause that's what it seems like a lot of people do nowadays. They always just sell cars. As soon as it gets out of that, you know, base manufacturer warranty, people just get rid of them. But overall, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with this actually. So I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. That's gonna sum things up with our video on this Chrysler Pacifica. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Large Miller Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in Provo for giving me some time with this van. Check out the intro in the description down below. Ask for Ryan if you have any questions. I'll see ya.